Hello, my name is Joe Hildreth and welcome to episode 17 of Linux CNC for the Home Hobbyist. In this episode, I'll be giving a hands-on example of compiling a real-time kernel using the preempt RT kernel patch for Linux CNC. In all transparency, I want you to know that I'm not a programmer and am myself very new to compiling software on Linux. There may be better ways to do what I'm going to show you in this video, but consider this as a springboard to get you started in the subject matter. Finally, I wish to remind you that I'm a home hobbyist that would like to share my experience using Linux CNC, formerly known as EMC2, as a controller and CNC controlled machines for the home shop. It's my hope that as I release these videos over time that other home hobbyists can use the information to make their own CNC controlled machines. With some luck, maybe these videos will remove some of the mystery behind the Linux CNC controller and perhaps help some to avoid the issues that I encountered while I tried learning to use it. With that out of the way, let's get started. You may be asking yourself, why compile a kernel? Well, after making a few videos for Linux CNC, I started to get plenty of interesting and valid questions from users, mostly about parallel port issues and a few other miscellaneous questions. As a matter of fact, I was working on another outline to discuss the parallel port in a little more detail when things shifted, and I started getting questions about DB and Wheezy being at end of life, and the software that I suggested to stress test the system was unavailable because the repository seemed to be missing. Then I had a question from a couple of folks about why can't they run Linux CNC on a distribution of their choice. Well, being guilty of chasing rabbits now and again, I wondered that question myself and came to the conclusion that if a person is willing to do the work, then there's no reason that they should not be able to run Linux CNC controller on the distribution of their choice. The drawback is that Linux CNC requires a real-time kernel. If you plan on using it for anything other than a simulator, you'll have to compile your own real-time kernel. Why? Well, because as far as I know, none of the major distributions are packed with a real-time kernel that you can install. There are three options for compiling a real-time kernel. These are the preempt RT patch, RTAI, and Zenimai. Of these three options, preempt RT and RTAI are patches available for the Linux kernel. Unfortunately, I'm not familiar enough with Zenimai to comment on it. Most Linux CNC users will either use one of the first two options for a real-time system, and the one you choose may depend on the end use of the machine. Let me clarify this. Both preempt RT and RTAI are used to create real-time Linux kernels but they each have their strengths and weaknesses. For example, RTAI does better with software step in, uh, stepping and has less latency than the preempt RT kernel. But it is harder to set up and compile and as I understand is rather buggy in the later releases. Additionally, RTAI only supports a small subset of kernel releases. Preempt RT, on the other hand, does well when you're using MESA boards or other hardware that provides hardware stepping, has many releases supporting a bunch of kernel versions, and is pretty straightforward to compile. Now, if you're a hobbyist, like myself, you're probably using software stepping and a parallel port to control your machine, and you may feel that Preempt RT may not work for you. But don't fret. Depending on the computer hardware you have, you may find that it works just fine. Besides, if it doesn't work out for you, you're out nothing but some time and have the opportunity to learn some basics of a pretty cool new skill, compiling your own kernel. Now, rather than me blathering about how it's done, join me and I'll walk you through getting the preempt kernel patch, getting the kernel source code, installing the software you need to compile the kernel, patching the kernel source, making the config changes to make use of the preempt RT patch, compiling the kernel and its modules, and finally installing and booting the new kernel. Pause this video, grab a beverage of your choice, and let's get going. Okay, so I just want to um, be up front here. The, the machine that um, we're testing this on and that I'm recording on is an HP Pro 3000MT. Uh, it has a 
dual core processor and I think it has 8 gig of RAM okay and I have installed on here Lubuntu uh, 18.04 uh, just a vanilla install um, and I've done all the updates and the only other software that I've installed on here is the screen recording software so that well that you can watch this okay so Linux CNC requires a real-time kernel right to run and uh, most Linux distributions don't have that option to install a pre-built real-time kernel okay so if you want something other than the default Linux CNC distribution you're going to have to take matters into your own hands right and uh, I will have a written um, document available on my website and I'll link it in the description below um, to where you can um, download a written description to follow to use to follow along with this this uh, this uh, example that uh, I'm showing you here okay so uh, before you can uh, compile a kernel you're going to need to install some additional software okay that will include uh, build essential curses bison flex and the SSL libraries okay it's uh, these software packages include the compiler, and the libraries, and additional tools that the system will need to complete the compilation of the kernel. Okay, so we're going to install those first on the system. So I'm going to uh, open a terminal, and I like using shortcut keys. Okay, so I'm going to hit Control Alt and T as in Tom or Terminal, and I've uh, tell you what I want to do. Uh, I've made these. I think I'm going to go ahead and bump this up to about. 20 okay and I'm gonna hit uh, well that'd be good enough for now okay so um, in the Linux world um, a lot of times you'll do things in the terminal so you'll want to get used to this and once you open the terminal here we're gonna do 99.9% uh, .9 of the work that we're gonna do to compile the uh, kernel in this terminal okay so first we're going to install uh, the necessary requisite software and uh, you have to have uh, that's a since you're changing permissions or I'm sorry since you're changing the functionality of the computer you'll want to do that as a super user okay a root or in our case we're gonna use the command sudo okay and we're gonna use the program apt and then install and then we're gonna list the programs that we want to install so the compiler is build dash essential and then we want library and curses okay uh, dash dev uh, we want bison flex and we want the library SSL dash dev we hit enter it's gonna ask for the password and it's gonna install those so I'll let these install and I'll fast forward this through this part of the video okay now that we have the uh, uh, the required software installed we're gonna um, well, currently we're in our home directory so we're gonna create a, a directory to work in just to kinda keep things uh, neat and orderly so I'm gonna use the make dir command or make directory command I'm gonna make I'm gonna call it uh, RT um, kernel okay and then I'm gonna change directory or CD to that uh, uh, to that to that folder that we just created so a lot of times I like to use tab to uh, for command completion so if you see the stuff pop up there that's that's what I've done okay all right so uh, the next thing that we need to do is um, we need to download the the kernel source code and the preempt RT patch okay and um, so whatever um, installation or distribution of uh, Linux that you've installed it's got an active running kernel right it's it's running now it's essentially is the operating system and if we use the command uname and uh, minus R it will give us the version here you see that uh, my uh, Lubuntu distribution has a uh, 4.15.0 dash 48 generic that's that's what the kernel is called so the major version of the kernel is version 4 okay the major revision is 15 no subrevision and then 48 patches now that's not exactly how the um, kernels are, are are those numbers mean I mean they don't exactly translate like that but we do know that uh, we have a major version of 4 for the kernel 
So probably we want to stick with a uh, version four of of the kernel that we download and and um, and the patch. Okay. And the one thing that we need to uh, that I need to stress is that um, the version of the kernel that you download and the version version of the uh, preempt RT patch they have to be the same. Okay. Now what happens though is um, sometimes the uh, kernel gets ahead of the uh, preempt patch right so we'll start with uh, getting getting the preempt patch in order to uh, to get uh, you know to make sure that you know we're not getting ahead of ourselves so I'm gonna open up a browser and we're gonna see I haven't run it yet so it's, it's got a little housekeeping to do so sorry about the delay Okay, so I'm going to go to um, wiki, w i k i dot Linux Foundation dot org slash real time slash start. Okay, so this is the home of the preempt RT kernel patches. And uh, of course, I don't know how long this tutorial is going to be around, but you'll see the newest stable releases. Um, usually, the, this is the newest version 4 release, the new version 5, uh, kernel version 5 release. And then, uh, but if, let's say you have an older version of um, Linux that you're running that has a version 3 kernel and you want to stick with that. We can uh, read more, this link here, read more about the preempt RT versions. We'll open this page and you'll see all the actively supported um, or the actively maintained uh, patches here. So I'm going to go with, you notice that there's four different version 4 kernels, 4.4, 4.9, 4.14, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, and 4.19, uh, a 3 and a 5. And then you'll see some other stuff, uh, other kernel versions here that aren't uh, actively maintained. Um, so I'm going to go with the 419 patch. So I'll, I'll click this link here, and then this opens up. Uh, this is kind of a HTML version of FTP. So here we see the patch 41937, blah 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 patch GZ, and then the same thing dot sign XZ tar GZ tar sign. So basically what we have is uh, this is the same patch, it doesn't matter which one you download, it's whatever compression algorithm that you like, okay? And then the sign files are simply, they're signatures so that you can verify that you have the actual data. So rather than clicking here on this patch.gz file and downloading it, I want to do something a little bit different. Okay, I want to right click that and I want to select copy link location, okay? And then I'm going to come back to my terminal, right? Because remember, we're in this RT kernel folder. This is kind of where we want to keep everything for just to keep everything neat and orderly. I'm going to use the command wget, okay? And then I'm going to paste. Now, there's two ways that I can do this. I can right click the mouse and say paste, and see it pasted the, um, the uh, link location that we copied, or let me back this out. Uh, in the terminal we can use the keyboard shortcut of control shift and V and see it does the same thing so I'm gonna hit enter here and um, hopefully with a little luck this should download and only take a couple seconds okay there we have it so I'm gonna do a LS for list and there's our patch file okay so let's make take it want to take a note of what version of the patch you got so we got 419.37 so we want to make sure that when we go get our Linux kernel, we want to get the same source code, 4.19.37. So I'm going to come up here and we're going to open up um, the kernel.org website. And when it opens up, you'll see the latest stable kernel that you can uh, hit with the big yellow button. You see that we have the different versions of kernels that we can, you know, there's, you know, two version 5s, there's four different version 4s that we can, so these are the actively developed kernels, okay, 
but now notice that um, we wanted version 4.19.37 but you notice here that the 4.19 is a 40 okay so uh, you know maybe they'll match maybe they don't but most likely you know the kernel version is not going to match the patch that we downloaded so to get it we're going to come up here where it says protocol and location for HTTP we're just going to click on this link and again we get the FTP like interface for for the web and we want to click on Linux okay and and what in Linux are we interested in well the kernel and what version of the kernel well we want the 4.x version okay now this lists all the all the uh, change logs and 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 signatures and everything for all of the version 4 kernel so this is a really long page but what we want to do is we want to scroll down until we find where it says Linux here you see it says Linux over here yeah move this over some uh, see it says Linux and then we got the version numbers well we're gonna scroll down till we get to 4.19 okay 4.19.37 you see there's a few files here again you have the the compression type this is a tar GZ that's a signature a tar XZ and it's a signature and I'm just going to do again. I want to right click on the one that I want. I want the Linux 4.19.37.targz file. And I'm again going to say copy the link location. I'm going to come back over here to our terminal and wget space and control shift V to paste. And I'm going to hit enter. Okay. So this will download the kernel source code from. Um, the site and depending on your internet connection you know it it'd take a little bit you see it's a fairly large file it's 151 meg uh, and that's compressed alright so we're going to do a ls to list the files that we have so we have both now our Linux kernel source files and the and the uh, uh, the patch of the same version so we can you know get to making the uh, get on the project now you know uh, a little more in earnest so first thing we want to do is we want to extract the Linux kernel. Now I have a tar gz file, okay, so I'm going to use a command called tar and I'm going to pass some flags to it and I want x for extract verbose and file, okay, and then the file that I want to extract is Linux dash 4.19 yada 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 and I'm going to hit enter and then that is going to extract. Now depending on how fast your computer is that could take a little time. Okay, if you have a slower computer, it'd take a little longer. The uh, there's enormous amounts of code, um, source code for the kernel. Okay, so the kernel is uh, uh, uncompressed now. If we list the files with ls, we see there's this blue folder here, um, directory called Linux-4.19.37. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to unarchive our patch file. Now this is a .gz file so we'll use gunzip and what file do we want to unzip? Well it's patch dash 419.37 and hit enter. Now if I do an ls you'll see now that the patch file doesn't have the extension so it's been extracted. Alright so the next thing that we want to do is actually patch the kernel source code. So we're going to change directory into the source tree and hit enter. So all the work from here on out we will be doing inside of the Linux source tree. So to patch the kernel we're going to use the command patch right and we're going to pass to it p1 and we're going to direct that from we're going to go back a directory right and the file that we want to use to patch is called patch uh, 41937 RT19 and I'm going to hit enter and we'll see some stuff fly up the screen and those are the files that um, were patched in the in the kernel source tree. So this is so far, you know, it's really not too bad. We're just getting everything ready, okay? So the one thing I want to say about the kernel is that uh, uh, you know, it's it's it, if you've never done it before, it's very uh, you feel very apprehensive and nervous about it. Uh, you can. Um, you can make a non-functioning kernel and a non-functioning kernel means that when you boot up 
the computer doesn't work and I think that scares a lot of people away. I think a way that I like to look at compiling the kernel is that uh, the kernel um, obviously at the heart of it is the operating system but uh, you get the options of turning what support you want it actually compiled into the kernel or, or what you don't want the kernel to use or what modules that you want to you want the kernel to be able to use or not use so really you can take um, the kernel um, software you know the uh, the source code that makes a kernel and really uh, tailor it very tightly to a system if you wanted to let's say you wanted the system to have the smallest possible footprint you know maybe so that it would load faster okay so the very first thing that uh, the kernel developers recommend that you do is run a command uh, called uh, MR proper right and we do that using uh, the make program so we're going to type make space MR proper and hit enter and we'll see a, a few things pop up on the screen but really all it's doing is it's going through the source tree and making sure that there's no leftover artifacts or anything laying around from a previous build or maybe the maintainers left something in there uh, just just to give you the best chance so that you don't have a problem okay so now when you compile when you compile a kernel you know you have to configure what's in the kernel and you know if you're like me and most you know people are, haven't really done this much or have never done it you think to yourself well how in the world do I configure the kernel well fortunately for us if we look by doing a, le uh, a list uh, in the boot directory at the files that are there we see that we have existing kernels right you see the uh, VM Linus dash 4.15.0 20 and the 4.15.0.48 remember when we ran the uname this was the version that we were running and then but you also see that there's these config files right so basically the the config file that we have here is, is how this how this particular kernel was set up well we know this kernel works right so why not use an existing configuration file for the for our basic settings. So to do that, that file should be called dot config and should live in this directory right here that we're in. So a way to do that is we're gonna copy, which is CP, and we're gonna copy from the boot directory a file called config dash. Now we're gonna use a little trick here. We're gonna use the output of uname minus R to give us the name of the kernel so so this will remember this gives us the version so when we ran this we got 4150-48 generic right so this will create a uh, this will look for config dash 415-0-48 or you know generic I'm getting a little tongue tied so we want to copy that to the current directory that's what the dot means slash and then what we want to copy it as a different file name so we want it to be called dot config and press enter okay so we'll do a ls with an a to show us all files and we see there's the dot config file so this is that uh, config file up here we've copied it over to our current directory as dot config using the copy command we told it the file name to copy and where to copy it to and what we wanted to call it. So hopefully that's clear as mud. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So at this point uh, we can we can configure the kernel. So we're going to use a program called um, menu config. So we're going to make menu config and uh, the compiler will compile this here and we'll get a uh, uh oh okay so I paused the video and then I realized what I'd done but I had to wait for the uh, file to crunch so anyway notice here it says that uh, your display is too small to run menu config recall that I turned the uh, the uh, size of the uh, characters up very high so that you guys could see it 
So I tell you what, let me, uh, we're done with this here. Let me close that and I want to maximize this and let's see if that's enough uh, character space to do it. So let's try this again. Make menu config. I uh, also want to point out, and I guess I didn't think about it, um, when you have source uh, code, a lot of times there's a thing called a make file and the make file describes um, how to build the software okay and a make file can have targets so the different targets can do different things so when I run make and then some target like make menu config I'm only running a portion of the make file to say hey I just want to build this little piece alright so let's go back in here and try this again okay so uh, this is menu config it's uh, driven by n curses that's why we had to install that library and uh, recall that we uh, copied over our initial configuration file. So the first thing we want to do is to load that. So using your arrows left, right, up and down, I'm going to arrow right till load is highlighted and press enter. And then it wants the name of the configuration file you wish to load. Recall that we called it dot config and that's sort of the default and that's why we named it that. So that's already in the input box so we can press enter for OK to load it and then we can come in here and um, um, it looks like I've got some sort of error there I'm not real sure uh, or if that's just the stuff from the background of the screen uh, but anyway so um, the first thing we want to do is we want to go into general setup now remember we uh, patch the kernel with the uh, preempt RT patch and this is where we want to turn that on so I'm going to highlight using the arrow keys the general setup and press enter and then if we scroll down we should see preemption model right now it's set to voluntary kernel preemption right well that's not what we want we actually want a fully preemptible kernel so I've highlighted that and I'm going to press enter to select it and notice that the preemption model on the screen has changed to fully preemptible kernel so that's what we want so we're going to hit exit here and go back up out of the general menu back to the main menu and um, the next thing is 64-bit kernel well if you have a 64-bit machine or if you got more than 8 gig of RAM you can you know you can uh, build a 64-bit kernel if you want um, I only installed the 32-bit version of the operating system here uh, even though it's, the machine's got 8, 8 gig of RAM it just won't use it all, it can only use 4 but if you wanted that you could uh, uh, you can hit space to select it and you notice it puts a little asterisk there so that would be building a 64-bit a, a kernel so I'm gonna hit N for no and you notice there at the top there's enter select submenus right yes includes no excludes and modularizes right etc etc so the only other thing that I want to talk about is the ACPI options now talking to the folks on the um, Linux CNC IRC it was suggested that you turn these off but I noticed that every time that I turn this off I kind of sort of have problems so I don't know if it would be better to say uh, like maybe uh, on the uh, command line of the kernel if you wanted to pass along the argument no a no ACPI might be a better option and that's some research that I got to get into um, to better answer those questions now keep in mind that I'm new at this too and uh, there are uh, a lot of things that you can do to the uh, uh, kernel that you can turn on and turn off and you're welcome to go through these here and if you select something let's say we go to um, um, general architecture dependent options right and there's K probes well, well what is K probes well I have no idea but if you write arrow to help it will give you an, uh, a description of what these different options are and, and you know whether if you want to use them or whatever so my general um, advice is uh, I wouldn't change anything in the kernel unless you really uh, knew what that option uh, does right so I would uh, I would uh, stay away from changing anything I would concentrate on building your first kernel and making it run and then use that as a springboard uh, you know to move forward 
Okay, so I'm going to move exit to move out of the general architecture dependent options menu. Okay, I'm back to the main Linux configuration. So I've I've made all the changes that I care to make. Okay, so at this point, I want to save the configuration file, so I'll arrow right to save and hit enter. And it says it wants a file name to save the configuration as. I'm going to leave it as .config and hit OK. And then it uh, tells tells you that uh, the file was written to .config. And we can hit exit. And then we're back in the main menu. And we're done at this point. So we can hit exit. Okay. So now that we're out of um, the menu config, we can uh, actually just make or build the, con uh, the kernel at this time. Okay. And um, to do this, we can type make, and uh, make by default will make the make the kernel, or we can use the target all. So we can say, hey, make 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 all of it, right? And we'll build the kernel, and we'll build the modules. Okay. Now, one thing here before we make the software, I want to talk about number of processors. If you have a computer that has two or four processors or or cores. You can actually tell them, hey, use use everything here, every all the power you got. So to find out the number of processors that or cores that your computer has, you can run the command called nproc, right? Which I, I believe means number of processors. And here we see I, we return two because this is a dual core machine. So we could say make, and then we can use the J flag minus J, right? And then the number of processors you want to commit to the job. I could put two, and then put all right or I could just hit enter here and we use both processors to uh, compile the kernel now that would save you some time it would compile it a little faster uh, but since I'm capturing the screen and I need some processing power for that I'm not going to use the J option I'm just going to hit make now in the um, in the uh, in previous exercises for me uh, trying to figure out how to present this I started out with a virtual machine where I compiled the kernel about four times and then another machine that I discovered that I had a BIOS issue with uh, compiled it a few times and and these uh, these old machines are all about the same right and it's taking about two hours uh, two and a half hours to compile the kernel so uh, once we hit make uh, we'll let it compile I'm going to stop the video and then when it's done I'll sorry about that uh, when it's done uh, we'll come back and and we'll continue on uh, of course it shouldn't be but just a couple minutes or a minute for you guys um, but uh, so that's that so uh, get you a cup of coffee or go eat some lunch take a nap or something and come back when it's done so I'm going to hit make and <coughs> excuse me uh, here you see that we're starting to compile the software and this will just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll until it's done so when this is done I'll see you then well that took quite a while so uh, the next part that we wanted to do now that the uh, modules compiled is that uh, we want to install I mean the kernel and the modules are uh, compiled we want to install the modules and uh, because those go into a system folder it requires elevated privileges so this one we'll have to do with sudo make the target in the make file is modules underscore install and this would take a few minutes uh, not near as long as the the kernel so uh, maybe stretch your legs or something and and uh, we'll be right back gotta put in the password okay now that uh, all the uh, kernel modules are installed it's time to uh, uh, install the kernel and again that requires elevated privileges so we'll sudo if I can spell it right make and then install so the this is the last step of uh, compiling and, uh, and installing the uh, uh, kernel uh, this you know copies over the kernel that we compiled uh, that creates a system map, puts it over into boot, uh, puts its configuration file over in the boot directory, and then generates the initial RAM disk uh, file system for the kernel to boot to when it first starts up. And then we'll copy it over. And then finally, uh, when it's done copying its files, it will make a call um, and run the grub uh, update, uh, update grub script that will update the bootloader so that we can actually boot into it. 
So, you know, I realize that this is a lot of, uh, kind of a lot of information presented uh, rather quick. So I would suggest that uh, you watch the video a couple times. If you have questions, um, you know, put them down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer. But, you know, kind of like I said in the very beginning of the video, or at least I think I said in the very beginning of the video, I'm, I'm sort of a neophyte at this myself. I've, I've never really compiled a kernel before uh, until... Uh, uh, you know, last week when um, you know I was presented with the question, and I thought I would try it. So um, I'll shush and and I'll, I'll zip through the re I'll fast forward through the rest of this until we until the kernel's installed. Okay, so the kernel is now fully installed, and we could reboot the computer at this time and load up the uh, new kernel. Remember, I I said that you know it would make a call to um, um, to grub and here it looks in the boot directory. Now one last thing we could do is we can do a file listing which is ls of the slash boot directory and if we look we should be able to find information about what we just compiled. So here's the kernel we just compiled vm line is 4.19.37-rt9 and it will have an associated uh, system map, uh, initial RAM disk, um, and a config. So, you know, everything everything there is good. Now, the only other thing that I want to do, and this, this isn't mandatory, but when you start uh, a Lubuntu machine, and well, several um, different uh, various um, Linux distributions will do this too, the, the boot, grub boot menu is hidden. And it's hidden because, you know, most people don't really need to see it. It just pauses there for a few seconds and, and then continues on, giving you a chance to hit the shift key. Uh, if if you know about that, but in this case, in case we have a problem booting, I want the uh, boot menu to show up. So I'm going to edit a file. Now it's a system file, and which means I'll have to have uh, elevated privileges. So we'll use the sudo command. The file is in Etsy default grub is the file, and I actually need to. Okay, so sudo we're uh, you know need elevated privileges nano is the uh, text editor that I want to use and the file is located in Etsy default and it's called grub so when I bring this up here uh, these there are different configuration op options for grub uh, which I will not get into but uh, needless to say a hash or uh, uh, octothorpe or a number sign or a pound sign whatever you want to call it is a comment and I'm commenting out grub timeout style equals hidden. This will allow the, uh, uh, the, the, the boot menu to display. So I'm going to control X and I, oh yes, I do want to save my changes and I do want to save it to grub. Now I have to tell grub that I made changes. So this is another elevated command, sudo. And then the program that I'm going to run is called update dash grub. and you will see output here very similar to what we had here at the very top see sourcing creating grub configuration file it's looking through the boot folder and updating it okay so that's really all to this part of the video I think I might have to set up the camera so you can actually see the reboot um, okay so I have the video camera on the screen so that you can actually see the reboot because I would have no way of doing a screen capture of the reboot obviously after the computer started. Okay so the the kernel and its modules um, have been configured and compiled, the modules been installed, the, the kernel's been installed and I made a, a change to grub so that uh, it would force the menu uh, to appear. Now you don't have to do that but I like to uh, like to be able to do that. So let's shut the computer down and restart it and see what happens. So we can close this window here. I'm gonna hit that and shut down and wait for the computer to power off okay the computer's powered off all right I'm gonna turn it on and like I said hopefully you can see this and that I have everything in frame all right so there's the the bio screen and we should be getting okay now I'm just gonna hit the arrow key here so that um, 
so that I stop the countdown timer and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see the options and hopefully I don't hopefully I don't get you dizzy or something and I, I realize it's probably a little crooked but hey we'll we'll, we'll deal with it okay so the very first option is uh, if I select that that's going to um, load the most current um, installed kernel which in our case is the one that we compiled uh, compiled but I just want to tell you this in case if um, you know you try to boot it and the computer hangs or whatever and you have to power it off and restart it you can always get back to your old kernel by going to advanced um, options for Ubuntu and hit enter and you'll see a list of kernels and of course the very first one you see here is uh, Ubuntu with Linux 4.19.37-RT19 that's the uh, one that we compile, uh, compiled and installed and there's a recovery mode and then remember there's the one that we were running beforehand so if for some reason the computer won't start up or hangs up or something like that you can power the computer off by holding the power button in for several seconds it will shut off if you hold it it might take eight or ten seconds but the power will go off and then you you can go to the advanced uh, menu options and you can select your original uh, kernel right here so I'm gonna go up here and obviously we're gonna hit this one here and we see that it's loading the RAM disk and sometimes this takes a little bit Let's see if I can get the camera back here again this is not the best way to record and I apologize alright so it's telling us that the hard drive is clean so that's good okay so it says the job is running for low kernel modules and device manager okay and it looks like we're starting up but the big thing is will we end up back in the desktop suspenseful isn't it no oh, I see a mouse and I see the desktop and see if I can zoom back out here a little bit okay so alright so we booted into the computer so I want to start a terminal by pressing control alt and T and I'm gonna zoom up here so that maybe we can see this and again I want to apologize for this kind of camera work because um, we shouldn't really have to do this All right, um, Okay, so we're going to do a U name, U N A M E, right? And we're going to, oops. We're going to pass it. We're going to hit minus. I'm sorry about that. I'll edit that out. Okay, so we're going to hit U name minus R, and we see that we have 4.19.37 RT19. We're going to hit in uh, U name. minus a and if we looked here we see that this is in fact the preempt RT kernel so we know that that's good so all right so let me uh, go back to the slides and and we'll close this out and and uh, we'll move on so uh, that was a lot of work but you know what uh, you learned something and uh, and uh, you can move forward so so where to from here well that was a lot of information to absorb and compiling your own kernel can be a rather time-consuming process. The rewards, however, outweigh the bad bits. You're now on your way to having Linux CNC running on your favorite flavor of Linux. A big congratulations to you. So where do we go from here? Well, that's pretty simple. Next, I think we need to compile the Linux CNC software and talk about some of the options that we have to do that. For example, do we want to compile the newest development version or do we want the stable 2.7 version? Do we want to run it in use space or as an installable package? Maybe we just want to run Linux CNC as a simulator. I'll be discussing this and more in the next episode about compiling Linux CNC. As always, thank you for taking the time from your busy life to watch my videos. If the videos I produce help you, please consider liking, subscribing, or sharing. CNC is a fun and rewarding addition to the home shop, and if you have friends that are thinking of getting into it, please consider sending them my way. 
Other than that, have a blessed day.